Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell, and I'm the author of USMLE Step 2 Secrets. This is part two of the ear, nose, and throat surgery chapter. Please visit our website, www.medicalschoolvideos.com, for other uh, free links to medical school videos. And send us your ideas at step2secrets at gmail.com. Let's get started with this video. Describe the workup for an unknown cancer in the neck. The workup includes random biopsy of the nasopharynx, palatine tonsils, and base of the tongue, as well as laryngoscopy, bronchos bronchoscopy, and esophagoscopy, with biopsies of any suspicious lesions. This approach is known as triple endoscopy with triple biopsy. What is the scientific name for swimmer's ear? What causes it? Otitis externa, or inflammation of the outer ear, which most often is caused by infection with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Patients have pain with manipulation of the auricle and erythematous swollen skin in the auditory canal. Foul-smelling discharge and conductive hearing loss also may be present. Treat with topical antibiotics such as ofloxacin, neomycin, or polymyxin B, and possibly topical steroids to reduce the swelling. What causes otitis media? How do you recognize it? How do you recognize it? Otitis media, or inflammation of the middle ear, is an extremely common pediatric infection, most often caused by infection with Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, or Moraxella catarralis. Patients have no pain with manipulation of the auricle. Positive symptoms include earache, fever, an erythematous and bulging tympanic membrane, and nausea and vomiting. What are the complications of otitis media? How are they avoided? Complications inclu include tympanic membrane perforation with bloody or purulent discharge, mastoiditis with fluctuance and inflammation over the mastoid process roughly two weeks after the onset of otitis media, labyrinthitis, palsies of cranial nerves 7 and 8, meningitis, cerebral abscess, dural sinus thrombosis, and chronic otitis media because of permanent perforation of the tympanic membrane. Patients with chronic otitis media may develop cholesteatomas with marginal perforations that require surgical excision. Otitis media generally is treated with antibiotics to avoid these complications, and antibiotic choices include amoxicillin, second-generation cephalosporin, such as cefuroxime, or a macrolide. What is the problem with recurrent otitis media? How is it treated? Recurrent otitis media is a common pediatric problem, along with prolonged secretory otitis, a result of incompletely resolved otitis media, and can cause hearing loss with resultant developmental problems, such as speech and cognitive functions. Treat with prophylactic antibiotics or tympanostomy tubes. Adenoidectomy is controversial, but may help in some cases. It is thought to help prevent blockage of the eustachian tubes. What causes infectious meningitis? How do you recognize and treat it? Infectious meningitis, also known as bullous meningitis, is an inflammation of the tympanic membranes that can be diagnosed when otoscopy reveals vesicles on the tympanic membrane. Infectious meningitis is classically caused by mycoplasma species, but streptococcus pneumoniae or viruses may also be the culprit. Treat with erythromycin or clarithromycin to cover mycoplasma species as well as strep pneumoniae. What are the common bacterial causes of sinusitis? How is this condition recognized clinically? Sinusitis is often caused by strep pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, or other streptococcal or staphylococcal species. Look for tenderness over the affected sinuses, headache, and purulent nasal discharge, which can, which can be yellow or green. Associated symptoms are headache and or toothache in the case of maxillary sinusitis. Radiographs or CT scans are used to confirm the diagnosis and show opacification of the sinus, classically with an air fluid level in acute sinusitis. 
CT scans are preferred to evaluate chronic sinusitis or suspected extension of infection outside the sinus. Watch for high fever and chills. Treat with antibiotics such as amoxicillin, a second or third generation cephalosporin, a macrolide, or amoxicillin clavulanic acid for 10 to 14 days or for up to six weeks in chronic cases. Culture usually is not necessary unless the patient fails to respond to antibiotics. Operative in intervention, which includes a drainage procedure and sinus obliteration, may be required for resistant cases. By what age are the frontal sinuses well developed in children? The frontal sinuses may not be well developed until the age of 10 years. Define otosclerosis. How is it treated? In otosclerosis, the otic bones become fixed together and impede hearing. It is the most common cause of progressive conductive hearing loss in adults, whereas presbyacusis is the most common cause of sensory neural hearing loss in adults. Treat with a hearing aid or surgery. What causes parotid gland swelling? The classic cause is mumps. The best treatment for mumps and the complication of infertility is prevention through immunization. Parotid gland swelling also may be caused by neoplasms, of which pleomorphic adenoma is the most common type. Shogun syndrome, sialolithiasis, a stone in the parotid duct, sarcoidosis, and bulimia are other causes. Alcoholism can cause parotid gland hypertrophy as well. Remember that the parotid gland contains lymph nodes within its parenchyma, which is unique in this regard, which can become enlarged in a number of conditions, as with lymph nodes elsewhere. How do you recognize a nasal fracture? What complications may result? A nasal fracture can be seen on radiographs or CT scan. Watch for a septal hematoma, which must be removed surgically to prevent pressure-induced septal necrosis. What is the Weber test used to evaluate? How is it performed and interpreted? The Weber test compares bone conduction in the two ears. A vibrating tuning fork is placed on the forehead and the patient is asked where the vibrating sound is heard best. The normal response is to hear the vibration in the middle or equally in both ears. In patients with conductive hearing loss, the sound is heard best in the affected ear, whereas in patients with sensory neural hearing loss, the sound is heard best in the unaffected ear. What is the RIN test used to evaluate? How is it performed and interpreted? The RIN test compares air conduction with bone conduction. A vibrating tuning fork is placed on the tip of the mastoid process. When the patient can no longer hear the sound, the tuning fork is removed from the mastoid process and placed next to the auditory meatus of the external ear and the patient is asked if the sound can be heard. Because air conduction is normally greater than bone conduction, patients can hear the tuning fork when it is placed next to the auditory meatus, air conduction, even after they can no longer hear it vibrating on the mastoid, bone conduction. In patients with conductive hearing loss, bone conduction is greater than air conduction. Thus, they cannot hear the tuning fork when it is placed next to the external auditory meatus. In patients with sensory neural hearing loss, both air and bone conduction are impaired, but the normal ratio of air conduction being greater than bone conduction is maintained. Thus, they still hear the tuning fork next to the ear after they can no longer hear it on the mastoid. That's the end of the ear, nose, and throat uh, surgery chapter. Uh, please join us for some of our other videos.